Greetings. I'm Winton Goodrich, Superintendent for the Franklin Northwest Supervisory Union. Very pleased to be with you with this program that will focus on some special activities and special programs uh, throughout our supervisory union. With me today is Carol Lazat, the after school and summer program director. Carol has been with Franklin Northwest for 11 years. Also with us today, Rich Ballard. Rich is a 30-year employee, both as a science teacher and a technology integrationist. He's responsible uh, for the science fair and for integrating technology with teachers and helping them to, uh, to utilize uh, the latest and greatest in, in the technology world as they uh, provide learning opportunities for students. Uh, before we start uh, today's program, I just want to give a little bit of overview as to what a, what a supervisory union is. It's very confusing even for people who are employed within it. Franklin Northwest employs 550 people. We have over 2,000 students uh, that are educated in five different schools uh, and are governed by the supervisory union board and also by local school boards. As far as the context for after-school programming, I'm going to give some high points and then turn it over to Carol, who will give some of the, the more uh, uh, detailed uh, components of what happens in our program and then take us through some very exciting uh, activities that students uh, are engaged in. In fact, after-school programming is a wonderful time, uh, both during the school year and during the summer, for students to really try out a lot of very innovative things. So if you see rockets flying around the studio today, or you see Lego logo ro robots kind of migrating across the table, you'll know that uh, there's some pretty, pretty neat uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math that, that are going on here. Uh, with that, uh, Carol, tell us a little bit about what you do, how many students are involved, uh, what the activities are, uh, just a, a bit of the kind of nuts and bolts of of uh, some of the equipment that, uh, that we see here and some of the opportunities that children have. Okay, so um, our after school programs uh, actually started in 2000, the school year 2005-2006. It is funded by a 21st Century Community Learning Centers program grant. That's how the program started. It's, um, it was initially fully funded and then they reduced funding over the years. So it was a five-year grant in 2005-2006 and we've actually had several um, additional 21st century grants. Uh, when you come in later years, it's a 50% uh, grant and we are um, obliged to come up with local funding to provide the other half that's with community partnerships and funding um, leveraging uh, existing funding that we have with title funds and the uh, nutrition programs um, that is also part of our match so our programs have uh, originally it was just for middle school students which was fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth and um, with that, uh, we have expanded to include younger grades and uh, high school students um, with our Crossroads program, our Crossroads Explorers program, and our After Hours uh, high school program. Um, did, I, did I hear something about nutrition in there? Do you feed uh, students after school and in yes. the summer? Yes, we do. Uh, we do have, um, through the um, Child and Adult Care Food Program, that's through the Agency of Education's uh, Child Nutrition Programs, we offer meals at MVU, Swanton, and Highgate, mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Sheldon and um, Franklin Schools. For our Crossroads Program, we're offering uh, a snack, which is through the National School Lunch Program. These are free snack and a meal that are healthy and nutritious and all that. And during the summer, we offer breakfast and lunch as well in our summer programs. Because they're there all day. Yes. Okay. Well, they're there the morning. They're morning. Uh, and at VU, they get out at 2 o'clock during the summer. Okay. How many students are involved totally throughout the supervisory union? Um, it has been growing over the years. Uh, this current year, we're at 625. 
Uh, we had a dip because we had to change a program structure in it. Um, so we don't do first graders. First mm -hmm. graders, it's, it's kind of young for them to stay after school till five o'clock. Mm -hmm. So um, our programs are for grades two through 12 at this point. Mm -hmm. So you have really about a third of all the students that we have enrolled yes. uh, in our five schools. Yes. Okay. Uh, Rich, have you been involved in the after school programming? Yeah, I've been doing it almost from the beginning, uh, teaching a variety of classes. I've done programming, uh, computer programming with the kids and game programming. Uh, I've done some rocketry, aviation programs. We've taken the kids up to the airport during the summer. We actually, uh, for a few years, we actually, through the Young Eagles program, were able to um, take the kids up in a plane. And so the kids actually, from the, through the after school program, all got to take it, the kids that wanted to, got to take a uh, ride up in a single engine plane, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, we built rockets and, and done a lot of different things uh, throughout the years. Uh, so it's been, a, yeah, been an interesting program. You have to be a little careful that you don't just shoot down a plane with one of the rockets. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carol, I understand that uh, you have a, a video of uh, some of the activities that uh, that have happened over the past with kind of a pictorial of uh, kind of the, the multi-seasons and, and those kinds yes, of issues. Do so yeah. you want to take a moment and we'll just go, th go through that? Yes, there's um, it is actually photos from, a, from the whole span of the 11 years that the program's been running. So uh, last year it was our 10th anniversary and um, we did this uh, it's sort of a photo slideshow, basically, okay. but uh, it's a it's a it shows a lot of students that we've seen them from their them in the program in their early years, and they've grown up through the program. It's really funny. I feel like I have all these baby pictures. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and you probably do. Yes. So let's take a moment and we'll look at the, kind of the first segment of that uh, of that video. Carol, excellent, uh, excellent pictures of kind of the 10-year history of the, uh, the Crossroads program. Take us through the goals of what Crossroads are about and I understand there's some PowerPoint slides that will reinforce what you're, what you're saying. Uh, yes, when the program originally started, it was the um, school day, improved school day attendance, improved um, school day academic or achievement and also to, uh, by providing programs, prevent substance abuse. Mm -hmm. That was the original um, goals. Through the, over the years, we've uh, increased um, actually our number of goals, and um, we still have the uh, improved school day performance, and we have the uh, improved school day attendance. This is something that um, 21C 
uh, requires us to report mm -hmm. on. We're using school day uh, attendance uh, to see, compare from this year that they're a regular attendee, how did their attendance compare to the prior year? And um, pretty much we have improved, students will have less days absent mm -hmm. um, the year that they're a regular attendee in our programs. Mm. Having greater school day attendance also then leads into better school day performance mm -hmm. because they're there. Uh, so we also uh, report on the standardized tests. Mm -hmm. This is what is required um, by the state and the Federal Department of Education for this grant. Um, also our goals are uh, improve overall health and physical well-being. This is something uh, when you consider that the Vermont um, for Franklin County is one of the highest obesity rates in the state of Vermont. And with child obesity on the rise nationally, this has become another, uh, I'll say a state mandate that he wants us, the mm -hmm. program director of the state wants all the 21C programs offering like 20 minutes of mm -hmm. physical activity as part of our program. So we have incorporated fitness um, activities, a, um, a like a regular 15-minute wiggle time where we go out and you know uh, go around the path around the school, or they have some active mm -hmm. game in the gym kind of thing. So we we're doing that. We also provide cooking and nutrition programs. Uh, we have a, a fit and fun class where it incorporates some nutrition in there. So we have, um, we have incorporated that. We also have um, improved the level of self-esteem and social well-being. This is something um, that, uh, well, when you say social well-being, we're talking like um, social emotional skills and things like that. So we have worked with our coordinators and our staff to train them on mindfulness techniques which mm -hmm. gives kids students uh, a strategy to de-stress before they mm -hmm. um, can't control their selves mm -hmm. so in being proud about being able to be um, doing all of our activities and stuff so we're building self-esteem uh, another goal that we have is uh, encourage participants to learn new skills gain confidence problem solve, try new things, and to become a responsible citizen of the local, the local and global community. And yes, that is one goal, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but it's, it sort of all ties together. Um, this is looking to provide new opportunities and to encourage students to actually do them. So it's, it's part of what they're calling the growth mindset to mm -hmm. get uh, students with an attitude of um, I can try this and if I fail it's not me personally it's just I got to try again mm -hmm. and your brain actually grows because mm -hmm. you are uh, constantly activating new neurons and all that stuff so mm -hmm. uh, learning new skills uh, problem solving uh, these these are those transferable skills that Depart the agency of education is also looking to see mm -hmm. in the school day and we're um, providing school that school linkage as well as we're incorporating that into our programming uh, responsible citizen of the local and the global community that's there's lots of opportunities for us in the after school program being um, like an informal time you know structure we can do more things that um, you can't do during the school day mm -hmm. um, for uh, for these community events we've done uh, Socktober which was kid president on YouTube saying let's do something for the homeless and why don't you give them socks kind of stuff so anyway it's a really funny uh, YouTube you can check it out but mm -hmm. He has become this champion of the homeless and made October the month to make your donation. So mm. we've done sock collections and, and it gives an opportunity for the students to learn about um, what it is to be homeless mm -hmm. and, and that kind of stuff. 
So, and we've done other things. We've done, you know, Water of the World, we've raised money for, we've, um, we have the students go to the senior center and um, visit with seniors. Um, and we did, uh, it was a Heifer International. We oh, sure. raised money and provided a family a goat to mm -hmm. provide an income for them, stuff like that. So uh, it gives students an opportunity to see around the world and their community. It's like we're all together kind of stuff on this planet and uh, we're sharing the resources and stuff. Well, one of the activities that is unique that I've always been impressed with in the summertime and we've got an example right behind us here is the the rocketry and Rich I think you have some role in that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah you talked a little bit about it earlier but how do, how do students <laughs> Do they build their own rockets? Yeah, this rocket here is actually one that was uh, a purchase kit. I mean, you kind of have to put it together a little bit, but um, the kids actually uh, start off by building a, uh, a rocket from a kit, yep. and they get a chance to, to you know, learn the basics of it. We go out and we'll launch those rockets. And then uh, the second day of the project, I actually have a whole kit of just tubes and fins and whatever, and they actually design their own. So we're trying to get this design thinking and uh, the whole ideas that, that are being talked about. And so the kids actually build their own. I wish I had some of theirs because they all take them home afterwards, but mm -hmm. they had rockets that were, you know, like twice as high as this one here. And, yeah. you know, with some little ones, they just, they were experimenting with all kinds of different things. It was just super impressive to watch the kids uh, get into, you know, and, and you were talking about problem solving and yeah. things of that nature. And there's a huge amount of that going on in here in the growth mindset because they have to think outside the box to mm -hmm. solve a problem when they get one. And uh, they did the same thing this past summer. I didn't, I don't have one with me, but we built uh, little robots mm -hmm. this summer with, uh, yeah. we, we, they're called a Sprout. And it was another example where I saw the kids never done um, any kind of uh, soldering or anything like that. And the kids had to learn how to solder. They had to learn how to put all these in. And they were working on a tiny little robot. And it was an amazing thing to see mm -hmm. these kids as they you know, persevered through trying to build this thing and finally come out with something. And it was so exciting to see you know, when it actually worked because you know, they're like seeing this robot moving around the, the room that they had built. And it's just such a great sense of satisfaction for the kids mm -hmm. you know, just to see that and, and uh, see those kinds of things happening. So we see that all the time with these programs. Well, putting, going, hearkening back to your science background, I know that both in the day programs at school and also in the after school program, we spent a lot of time focusing on both STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and we also add the arts to it because the left brain and right brain creativity also has a, has a key role in that. I, I saw a statistic uh, not long ago that and we're, our students are competing against students throughout the world. And when you look at uh, what they're up against, there are more valedictorians in China and in India separately than there are total students in the U.S. And so to be able to have these kinds of opportunities for our students to, to challenge themselves to higher levels, the growth mindset, uh, it's wonderful to be able to have these, these experiences for them and to get excited about the hands-on uh, part, which is different than uh, last century when I went to school. Uh, so good, good for us, good for our, our students. Our uh, sixth goal is uh, increase student access to experience of inquiry into STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics, activities and opportunities. This is something that has been um, definitely nationally been um, a challenge being uh, made to schools as well as after school programs. Our Vermont After School Link that does training for all after school programs in Vermont, they uh, have gotten several grants um, to help expand and to do training with after school programs. We actually received uh, a tinkering grant last uh, year and again this year, which is to train staff on how to encourage students to look at something and just start mm -hmm. building and not necessarily following a plan, but just building mm -hmm. freely, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And then we also have had Engineering Adventures, which is another grant that we received, which um, provides engineering, um, the, the 
ask what is it? It's the design process mm -hmm. in engineering and having kids where you think about the problem, try something, and then doesn't work, reevaluate and try again kind of stuff. So this this so STEAM is a big part of our programming. This is basic hands-on science time. Being after school, you have a lot of flexibility um, in doing this kind of stuff. You don't have to be following your your lesson plan uh, that's following the curriculum of the district. Mm -hmm. We can take uh, what you're doing in, during the school day and we can expand on it or mm -hmm. focus on uh, an aspect of, um, of your science or your uh, technology classes. So um, this has been part of, from the beginning of our program in 2005-2006. Rich actually was one of our first teachers in our program that first March 2006 when we had our mm -hmm. session. And, um, at that time, Rich was this, the uh, middle school science teacher, and you did classes like laser lights and electricity and game maker programming and solar cars, and, and you have been doing all our rocketry every summer, e yep. every summer <laughs> you've been doing it. So, yeah, long time. But now, um, as a technology integrationist at MBU, you are... Um, still facilitating after school classes, which we're so glad you, you have done some like 3D printing and I can see you have some of your 3D um, objects there. Um, and also this, we had the STEM, um, the Maker Camp this year right. um, and the, um, the STEM, was it, what was it called? It was the, uh, no, it was the Maker's Camp. Yep. So we had our second year of the M Makers Camp along with the yep. rocketry. So, but um, uh, the other thing that we've been doing um, three years ago, the uh, after school program, the MVU uh, after hours program started the science fair with one of the science teachers and it's expanded each year. Uh, I think the first year was very small, then it went to 40 and then uh, Last year, 80. Yep. This year should be 120, whatever. So Rich is our um, STEM fair coordinator at MVU, and um, it's it's really uh, neat to see how this program developed, and now it's actually part of the science um, requirements for the yeah. high school students to part participate. Yep. So, so. This is the week for the, what is it? The third or the fourth? <laughs> this uh, this week, this Thursday, the nineteenth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a busy busy week, um, which I know this isn't going to air before that, but you can take a look, and we'll hopefully we'll have some video of this. Uh, is going to be on Channel 15, also of the STEM fair, and uh, so we're we're excited that they're going to come up and and talk a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, the STEM fair has been going on for a few years, as I said, we or as as you mentioned, it's grown every year. Um, the first two years uh, was with Donna Desitel was the science teacher that was that kind of started it, and then I uh, was able to kind of walk into the uh, her shoes and, and take over as the coordinator last year. Um, so we started I think the first year she had 20 kids that participated and went to states. The second year she had about 40 kids. Uh, last year, as you said, we had 80 kids. About 20 of those kids went to states and did very well. And this year, uh, we have right now about 120 kids that are signed up to participate mm. this week. So, mm. which is almost the same size as actually the, the entire state fair. Uh, the state fair has about 150 students that participate. So our local fair mm. is just about as big as the state fair. <laughs> so uh, it's getting to be quite a uh, quite a big. Uh, thing to coordinate and get the judges. We have about 24, 25 judges that are going to be joining us uh, from all around the area. Uh, we're really uh, been very fortunate to have, you know, some engineers from Global Foundries, from uh, people from uh, Superior Ceramics, Technical Ceramics, uh, from Myelin. Uh, we've got some nurses and doctors uh, from different area uh, health organizations here. So there's going to be a lot of people that are helping out with it, and we're real excited about that. Um, you know, like I said, last year we did very well. Uh, we've, we've in, in the time that we've been doing it, our students have been uh, very successful. And uh, two years ago, we had a young lady that went to the uh, international. It was uh, 
science fair basically down in Houston. And so she got a, a trip down there. And then this year uh, we had our, our uh, we had two students that was the, Michaela Magnet was the number one senior in the entire state of Vermont. Uh, so we won that, she won that award. And then we had Carissa McFadden uh, who was the number one junior in the state. So basically our little school up here competing with all the big schools all over the state uh, took first and second in the top senior and the top junior in the state. And then we had other kids that did very well. We had a seventh grader that won the top prize in the district. There's a, or in this uh, Franklin County, there is a, a prize that's given out by uh, Superior Technical Ceramics that is a cash prize for the top project mm -hmm. in the district. And so they picked this young man, uh, Evan Barron, had done a, uh, had done a project on windmills and did a really nice job. He did some 3D printing of them and, and uh, so that was an exciting thing. Is, and we've had a lot of uh, support from the community. Uh, Mylan, a uh, local uh, manufacturer here, donated a, uh, a very nice grant for, the, for us to you know, continue. Uh, there's been other companies that have been donating throughout the years to help us to have prizes for the kids, uh, to help us to do a lot of different things. And so it's been a really interesting thing in the back right here. I don't know if we can see them or not, but I've got a couple of the projects that uh, kids are going to actually be um, showing this year. Uh, this one here, we using some of the Mylan funds as a grant, we bought, this is a uh, little brainwave detector um, called a Motive. And so Sarah Robte, she's a 12th grader this year, she decided to see whether she could use the brainwaves to tell if people were lying. And so she did a whole experiment on this using the, the little emotive uh, de design thing here. So it was pretty cool. And uh, you can come and see her results on uh, Thursday if you want. And Rich, Rich, a question here. Yep. So wow. uh, did it work? <laughs> I, I didn't have a chance to actually see, but I think she did find a change. Yes, in the because uh, what this shows is there's uh, six different things. It measures different parts of yeah. the brain for interest and uh, for excitement. You can see them up here, engagement, focus, stress, and relaxation. And so the stress was the area that, you know, I think she was kind of testing, thinking that that was the area that would rise when a kid was telling a lie. Mm. And uh, so I think she did find some information. Uh, that, that showed it, but I, haven't, I hadn't had a chance to read through all their conclusions yet, so I wasn't uh, positive on it yet. I bet that uh, from an entrepreneurial program standpoint, because we yeah. like to incentivize and, and encourage students to do entrepreneurial activities, sure. maybe sell that unit to parents to be able to use <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. at home. There we go. Put this on your kid and ask them where they've been. Last that's night, right? exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but then we have another uh, student over here that's doing a thing with herbicide. So again, nice experiment, long-term experiment. She was growing you know, different uh, materials and testing different natural herbicides. So uh, we've had kids that are doing stuff with phosphorus. We've had kids that are, you know, and testing uh, the effect of different r farm runoff, which mm -hmm. is, that's a very interesting experiment. Oh. Uh, I've, we have a 3D printer that was one of the things that we were able to buy with the Mylan grant uh, last year. And so we have kids that are doing 3D printing of like this is a fractal design. Uh, he's he's testing it's a which is uh, there's different types of fractals which are math shapes basically, and so he wanted to test the strength of different uh, shapes basically. Which mm. and he used a, a math program to design these fractals, and then he three D he designed them and three D printed them. So mm -hmm. this one actually isn't his his real ones are a little bit taller than this one actually fell apart halfway through, but I, mm -hmm. since I had it, I thought I'd bring it. But, uh, but the 3D printer is a really cool thing that's also working, um, that the kids are using for the science fair. Like I said, the kid that did the windmills last year. Uh, I have a young lady this year, actually it's Carissa, who was the top junior this year. She's doing a whole experiment where she 3D printed a hand and she's testing uh, different types of material that will contract when they have electricity. It's uh, put through wow. them and so she wants to mm. see if you know, that uh, if she can create basically a prosthetic hand mm. uh, in, a, in a way that it would cause it to work. So lots of very interesting things. The kids are really, you know, working uh, very hard on this. And like I said, it's gonna be a very interesting uh, project. I think kids will, uh, will enjoy it and people will enjoy it if they get to come out. Excellent. Wow. Thursday, January 19th. <laughs> Starting at five o'clock? Five o'clock, yeah. And it will go how long? Till about seven-ish, you okay. know. I mean, we're, we're always, <laughs> those things are always kind of a little, sure. you know, how, how long it takes to get all the judging, you know, right. scores calculated and everything. We actually, this year, uh, we have um, Elena Westcomb, who was uh, 2015 Miss Vermont. 
mm -hmm. uh, is going to be coming as a judge, and also she's going to be performing. Uh, she her winning uh, thing that she did for the Miss Vermont contest was to make elephant toothpaste, which was a science experiment, and mm -hmm. so she's going to do some science experiments for the kids. Uh, afterwards, while the scoring time is going on, she's going to be down and, and kind of entertaining the kids with some science demos. So very excited about cool. that, too. Well, let us uh, then transition. We're going to merge a couple of the video segments together from a time standpoint. So let us uh, pause for a moment and we'll take a look at transferable skills. There's some STEAM uh, components on that and also community partnerships. Here we are again after another uh, exciting video clip. Carol, talk with us a little bit uh, in the video and in the, in the next world-renowned video that uh, is uh, one uh, great acclaim, the, the transferable skills. What, what, do, what does the public need to know about that? What do students learn about transferable skills? What does that really mean? All right, so transferable skills is uh, something that you actually can find on the Vermont Agency of Education's website because they are looking at uh, high schools and um, middle schools to actually be incorporating this into their uh, graduation requirements mm -hmm. that students are graduating and they have these 21st century skills. Um, you know, one there's, um, with our STEAM programs, um, Crossroads has been increasing opportunities um, where we're providing fun, inspirational, and learning opportunities. And as part of that, there's teamwork that's involved. There's, um, there's a lot of different activities that lend themselves to being transferred into the classroom and into your work um, life. We have um, a video of our Franklin Crossroads Claymation, which actually won an award, um, a Vermont award, for one of the best um, uh, elementary after school programs. Nice. So we have this video clip um, that shows uh, how working in teams and they're pulling in so many different skills um, that will apply to, uh, to they're actually going to be life skills for some of these kids um, okay. between the computer software into working together with the team. Um, so this is the uh, Franklin Crossroads Claymation. Okay, let's take a, take a moment to to watch this uh, state-renowned, if not world-renowned, video clip. We thought of like the strawberry kicking and smashing the cupcake. 
obviously. And, um, but really, we kind of just like, we just made up as we went. The cupcake flying down. on something that wasn't really rock and roll. So I just kind of put on like an ACDC type of music. All these drums started playing and guitars and I thought it was awesome. Um, I would definitely do this class again because I thought I could learn more about my partner and it was just fun talking to them about the stuff. And I learned tons of new technology things. Like I had to go on the internet to do to find assortment um, music, and then I had to go to Windows Movie Maker, find my document, and it was just all crazy. Hi, I'm Dylan. I'm Haley. And this was Crossroads Claymation. different ideas but we decided a lot of people were doing seals and other things that we were going to do so we decided on aliens. Playing moon soccer. It takes a lot of patience. Yes and a lot of hard work and it's very fun after a while. had to pick a topic and we were just ba thinking of things that we like to do and stuff like, like characters fantasy. yeah like fantasy so we came up with mermaids and we had to use clay to make little figures we had different colors and paper clips to hold it up to hold pieces up and places and then we had to make a background so we could make our video. So it was, it was a pretty slow process, but in order to make the movie be look smooth and look like it's actually moving, we had to take a lot of pictures.
wrapping up the transferable skills, uh, schools throughout Vermont and, and nationally are very much concentrating on skills that, um, that are the same kinds of expectations that employers will have in the world of work. And so when we talk about it, transferable across disciplines within school and transferable to uh, their work life after they graduate from high school or after college, whatever their post-secondary aspirations are. Carol, speak with us a little bit about an exciting competition that happened this year, uh, again at Norwich University. Norwich must be the hub in the state <laughs> because the, the state science fair has been there, although I think it might be moving this year. I think it's still there this still, year. Still yeah. at Norwich, Norwich, and you were at Norwich. Uh, do you have to salute when you go on to the military <laughs> campus? Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Lego Logos. Okay, well, it's, um, it's the first Lego League. It's for um, children 9 to 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, were, um, we put it out there in our Crossroads Flyers to see you know, what students might be interested. And we had, um, we had one from Highgate Elementary School. We had one from Swan Elementary School. Mm -hmm. We had two from MVU Middle School and one from um, the MVU After Hours program that wanted to do it. So we brought these students together on Saturday for two to three hours for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. So the first Lego League mm -hmm. is a competition where the students need to follow through like 12 activities with the robot. They have mm -hmm. to program, a, they have to build a robot, they program it to successfully complete these activities. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to like work as a team. Uh, this was a very, um, difficult concept for our team and they you know worked it but it was it was an incredible learning lesson mm -hmm. for them and all of us involved. <laughs> Sounds so. like it connects to the transferable skills as oh, far as absolutely. problem solving and team building. Absolutely. All of those kinds of They have of core values that they, they need to report on uh -huh. uh, to the judges. There's a core value uh, for the team work uh -huh. that they need to report on. There's the robot challenge that they report on and um, there were they all compete at Norwich University on December 11th and we had there was 24 school teams there mm -hmm. and that in itself was really exciting and they had turns to go up on two tables and they compete against each other I have um, I have a lot of photos that we'll be showing you um, mm -hmm. that show this competition the um, the students we had five um, boys that uh, actually came up with the team name of Robo Birds because Robo it's Birds. Robo Birds because okay. it was Highgate Hawks was oh, in sure. the Swan and Swans yes. and there's uh, MVU Thunderbirds. Oh, oh, so we had t it. matching t-shirts and cool. uh, they, they really loved their name. So <laughs> okay. it was interesting. So, you know, we didn't win prizes. But just going and participating was an experience, and I think we all enjoyed it. They had demonstrations by the first robotics team that won last year, which is the high school equivalent, where they, they have this huge robot, and they had him, they had people allowing people to test drive the robot. It was, it's really good. So the, I think they had a, a great time. It was a great learning experience. Lots of transferable skills, mm -hmm. and uh, so anyway. Okay, uh, Rich, help me to know. Talking about Robo Birds, what's all the hype now with the the, the mini helicopters that are delivering <laughs> UPS? <laughs> uh, the drones. Uh, the drones. Yeah, that's well. a different kind of Robo Bird. <laughs> yes, yeah. Like schools uh, are now having to create policies around uh, when when they can fly, where they can fly, the proximity to airports. Sure. Uh, all of that for, for yeah, drones. It's become quite, a, uh, quite an issue here, and they actually oh. have to be regulated now by the FFA yep. uh, because of the uh, problems with, or not the FFA. FAA. No, FAA, right. I knew there was a couple of A's in there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but they, yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a few rules dealing with that. But it's an interesting area. And actually, uh, speaking of 3D printing, I've actually seen plans for 3D printing uh, the little drones and actually mm. creating them. Uh, as part of a design work, mm -hmm. so it'll be an interesting project maybe to do uh, with the cool. students. Well, as, as we begin to wrap up today, Carol, what are kind of three main 
you know, kind of uh, the high level goals of the after school program? What, what is it that viewers would, would take away from this? Well, after school programs are, are actually national and there are support groups and um, groups for uh, uh, promoting after school programs throughout the state and providing training and all that. Um, after school programs in general, they are keeping kids safe. They provide a safe place for them to be. Mm -hmm. So um, between our after school s snacks and meals, so we're keeping uh, kids healthy and safe after school and in the summer, um, inspiring learners with a wide range of opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, helping working families by, you know, the parent knows where their child is at three o'clock when the right. school day ends. And the kind of final issue, what I know about the uh, after school program, there's also an equity component for children um, that maybe don't have the same means as, as other families that that, that might, well, how does the equity piece uh, play into this? Is that, a, that of interest to the federal funders? Yes, well, um, actually they have started a campaign called Zap the Gap, okay. and that is to address this uh, inequality of resources because we have a, a, a geographic mm -hmm. gap because rural, between urban and rural, there's big differences on what mm -hmm. they can provide and what children have access to. We have an achievement gap that we know, mm -hmm. you know, students um, with families that can provide opportunities during the summer, those students, you know, gain uh, scores on their, on their test scores, whereas the uh, students that don't have the means for opportunities during the summer actually fall behind so there's an achievement gap there's also a opportunity gap mm -hmm. it's just not opportunities for um, again it relates to the the geographic mm -hmm. and um, and so that's what we're looking at for uh, the state as well as the, the national they're looking to zap the gap to zap the gap well we've come to uh, the end of our program to, uh, today, and I'm very appreciative to have Rich Ballard, the technology integrationist and former science teacher at Missisquoi Valley Union with us, Carol Lazat, the after school crossroads director, uh, talking with us about all the exciting things that are happening in the summer and after school for a third of our students, uh, primarily funded by the federal government uh, with some partnership support locally and a little bit of uh, support from local school boards. Uh, we also provide transportation for students after school, so there's a, a way and a means to, to get home. I'll connect one of your wellness goals to an initiative that's going on here in Franklin County through the uh, Northwest Medical Center. RISE Vermont uh, is doing some research internationally around the student obesity issue. I had the, uh, the fortune of, good fortune to travel to the Netherlands in uh, November. Uh, with a team from the hospital and from uh, the health department to explore ways that, that we can um, community-wide support the kinds of goals that you have in school and help to reduce the obesity uh, trend with, with children and help them to have healthier lives as they use those transferable skills uh, after school. Uh, many thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be doing a, a program about every two weeks for the next uh, three months. So we look forward to seeing you again in the future from Franklin Northwest. I'm Winton Goodrich, signing out today.